Get this done without me, I'll be back once it's done. After my father's funeral, I called back, crying, only to be screamed at by Emily, my son Daniel's wife, with a voice so loud it felt like the smartphone would explode. If you don't come, Sam's haircut appointment will have to be cancelled. Who's more important to you, your dead old man or your still young grandson? At that moment, I heard something snap inside me. How dare she refer to my beloved father as old man. I had always been quiet and compliant, but I had reached my limit. Hannah, is something wrong? As I turned around upon hearing the voice from behind, there stood Kay. A junior colleague deeply cherished by my late husband. Kay, I need to go back. What? But the graveside service is about to start, isn't it? Kay's expression changed instantly when I told him about Emily's remarks. And I could see anger rapidly filling his eyes. Hannah, you don't have to go. I'll talk to her. Kay said, and without waiting for my reply, he turned on his heel and started running. I hesitated for a moment, thinking of calling him back, but then I thought better of it. Knowing Kay was seriously angry and would confront her, Emily was probably not going to get off easily. Well, that might be for the best. She was trying to boss me around without even letting me collect my father's ashes. Kay's intervention was like a bolt from the blue. There's a saying about getting what you deserve. I am Hannah, a 55-year-old administrative worker at a pharmacy. Ever since my husband passed away six years ago, I had been living with my son Daniel until he got married. Daniel works in shifts at a factory, which sometimes makes it hard for us to have compatible living schedules, but we had been living a peaceful life without any trouble. That changed four years ago when Daniel suddenly announced he was getting married. Turns out, his partner was already pregnant. It just happened on our third date, and well, we ended up conceiving. Third date? That's hardly any time at all to be in a relationship. But what can we do? There's a child on the way. And with that, I was left with no comeback. Emily had lost her parents early on and had no one to rely on for her first childbirth. Thus, Daniel and Emily ended up living in my house. Having a stranger move into my home was not a pleasant thought, but given the circumstances, I couldn't refuse. Initially, Emily was demure, but after giving birth, she began to order me around. I've shown you your grandson, and I'll be the one to take care of you in the future. I'm busy with childcare right now, so you need to do all the housework." She boldly stated, expecting meals to be served and complaining whenever laundry or cleaning was not up to her standards. I could understand when Sam was an infant, but now that he's three, nothing has changed. I had tolerated Emily's behavior until now. Even when I suggested she help out a bit with the chores, I only received excuses in return. If something happens to you, I'm the only one who can take care of you, you know? That's true, but… I want to focus on raising my child and my job while I'm still able to. So, for now, I'm leaving everything to you. You don't have a problem with that, right? Emily claims to be an illustrator. She does have some work, but she's essentially an unregistered freelancer, not even doing her taxes properly. She neglects childcare and leaves everything halfway done. Strangely, she insists on taking a shower for the child herself, but otherwise, she doesn't bother even if the child is crying. She shows no concern for Daniel, who continues to work rotating shifts. Focusing only on getting expensive treatments for her straight, long hair at salons frequently. From what I see, there's a rift growing between Daniel and Emily. But I've been enduring a mix of resignation and patience because of my grandson. My father was 80, but even after my mother passed away, he insisted on living alone, refusing to live with me. If I live with you, I'll end up relying on you too much and my body will weaken. It's best for me to struggle a bit and stay strong. No matter how many times I suggested we live together, he stubbornly refused. Hinting he didn't want to be a burden on Daniel. I never thought it would be a bother. Ever since I was a kid, I adored my dad. He was hardy, never sweating the small stuff. Even when my mom crashed his car into a fence, or when I stayed out all night with my first boyfriend, he just laughed it off. 
The only time he ever really scolded me was if I caused trouble for others. Dad and I would exchange messages every morning to check on each other. He had diligently learned to use a smartphone just so we could use messaging apps without a hitch. The one who woke up first would send a sticker, and the other would reply, confirming we were both alright. That was our daily ritual. But one morning, I didn't get a reply to my message from Dad. Usually, he'd send back a sticker of the sun smiling, which he was particularly fond of. Even when I called him, he didn't answer. Worried, I rushed to my parents' house before going to work. With trembling hands, I unlocked the door and ran inside. And then… Dad! There he was, lying in the hallway, clutching his chest. I ran to him, but he was already not breathing. Dad! By the time I desperately called out to him, he had already passed away to heaven. Overwhelmed with grief, all I could do was cry, while my son, Daniel, took care of the arrangements. Daniel, thank you. It can't be helped, it was so sudden. Just leave it to me, and stay by Grandpa's side. Daniel was very considerate of me, but Emily, Daniel's wife, didn't even come to see Dad. The funeral is just a hassle if you have small kids. Me and Sam aren't going. She declared this early on, making her intention to skip the funeral clear to me. I was too overwhelmed with my own grief to be angry at her. Besides, it was a small family funeral with about ten relatives, like cousins, attending. I thought it wouldn't cause much of a stir without Emily there. The day of the funeral was a cloudless, sunny day, as if to show off Dad's character. I alternated my gaze between Dad's portrait and his coffin, tears flowing endlessly. In the crushing sadness, I suddenly noticed something odd. The smartphone in Daniel's pocket was vibrating over and over again. Before the funeral started, since his clothes had no pockets, I had given him my smartphone to hold. Daniel seemed bothered by it, but of course, he couldn't just check it during the funeral. In the end, we had to leave it be. Mom, it's from Emily! Right after the funeral ended, my smartphone, which Daniel handed back to me, showed missed calls from Emily. Emily only calls me when she needs something. I wonder if something happened to Sam. Daniel muttered with a serious look. Well, I'll call back and see. With that, I moved to a corner of the hallway and called back. No sooner had the phone started ringing than Emily answered. How many times do you think I've called? I'm sorry, I was at the funeral. What happened? Immediately after, a sharp voice pierced through my ear as I tried to hold back tears. It's Sam's haircut day today. Come back now and take him to the salon. I couldn't grasp the meaning of her words at first. Yes. After reflexively responding, I realized what Emily was saying. She was ordering me to take my grandson to the hair salon right away, even though I was at my dear father's funeral. But, we're about to go to Dad's cremation. I can't take Sam today. Huh? As if that'll bring the old man back. Did she really just say that? Emily, don't say that. Just get it done and come back already. With an intensity that blew away any of my objections, Emily rattled off what she wanted to say. If you don't come, Sam's haircut will get cancelled. Who's more important to you, a dead old man or your still small grandson? That's not the… Just come back now. Emily hung up abruptly after saying that. I was at a loss for what to do next. Forgetting even to remove the smartphone from my ear as I stood there dazed until I heard someone speak from behind. Hannah, is something wrong? It was Kay, a junior colleague dearly cherished by my late husband, who had spoken. Even now, he never fails to visit the grave on my husband's death anniversary, a man of deep loyalty. Though he can be quite intimidating when angry, he has always treated me with the same care as he had my husband. Today, he had rushed to the funeral, saying that Hannah's father was like a parent to him too. Kay, I need to go back. Huh? But isn't the graveside service next? I just got told by Daniel's wife that I need to take my grandson to get his hair cut. What do you mean by that? I explained to a surprised Kay about Emily's usual behavior and our recent exchange. 
how she bosses me around, acts arrogantly, and even called my father a dead old man. Hannah, you don't have to go. I'll talk to her. Kay, visibly enraged by my story, immediately turned on his heel and took off running. Knowing him, he wasn't just going to have a chat with her. Mom, are you okay? Daniel arrived just as Kay left and I briefly told him what had happened. Wait, Kay went to her house angry? Yes. If Emily made Kay lose his temper, it could be serious. But maybe it's for the best. Emily is in the wrong, after all. Daniel seemed to have no intention of stopping Kay either. In the end, I didn't go back home right away but stayed until the end of the funeral. We got everything done and returned home. I planned to stay at my parents' house for a while, but I had forgotten some things and was also worried about Emily's condition. You don't need to worry so much about Emily. On the way home, Daniel, gripping the steering wheel, spoke in a voice trying to suppress his anger. When we get back, I don't know what she'll say, but asking to come back in the middle of Grandpa's funeral is just too unreasonable. I'm starting to feel really disgusted. About Emily? Yes. She's been bossing you around, acting like she owns the place, and sometimes she yells at Sam until he cries. I'm thinking of considering divorce as an option now. Hearing the word divorce from Daniel's mouth bewildered me, even though I disliked Emily. With such a young grandson, could they really separate so easily? Yet, I was utterly exhausted from living with Emily. There might be a lot of issues, but I won't oppose a divorce. That was all I could tell Daniel. It's up to them as a couple to find a resolution they both agree on. How did things end up like this? I lost my husband, Daniel's marriage isn't going well. And my father, who was always by my side, is gone. As I thought about it all, I couldn't stop the tears from flowing again. Sorry, Daniel. Can you let me cry for a bit? With that, I cried all the way home. Upon arriving, the entrance was in disarray. The potted plants that had been on the cupboard were knocked over. The mat was also blown away to the middle of the hallway. Kay must have really lost it. Daniel said with a sigh. If you really make Kay angry, it's serious. But it's Emily's fault, so it can't be helped. As we walked into the living room, there sat Emily, stunned on the sofa. She slowly turned to look at us as we entered. It was the face I expected. There was no doubt that she had been roughed up by an angry Kay. You guys. As Emily stood up. She didn't seem to be staggering, suggesting that only her face had taken the brunt of it. Sending that man over, isn't that a crime? I didn't send anyone after her. I just told him what Emily had been doing to me. And then he got angry. Anyone would get angry, right? Huh? Just for that, he beat me up? It's not like he's a gangster. He is a gangster. A real one. At my response, Emily clammed up. My late husband was the son of a gangster. The man who came earlier was a junior colleague of my husband. He's always been fond of me, too. What are you saying? I told him about what Emily had been doing to me and how she demanded I come back home instead of attending my father's funeral. That's why he got so angry. As I was explaining, a loud cry erupted. My grandson, Sam, had somehow come to the door and started crying. Rushing over, he clung to me. Grandma, I'm scared. I'm sorry, Sam. I took my grandson to my room to calm him down. He stopped crying but wouldn't leave my side. Then, I noticed a small bruise on his neck. Wondering how it got there. Daniel entered the room with a stern look. I'll be staying at my parents' house for a while. Hearing this, Daniel picked up our child and I blurted out my decision. Wanting to get away from Emily as soon as possible. Yeah, no one wants to be around Emily anyway. There's that, and I want to stay there for now. Don't worry about Emily, I'll handle it. Thank you, please. With that, I packed some essentials into a suitcase, planning to stay at my parents' house for a while. All the while. I couldn't stop thinking about Emily's arrogant behavior towards me since she came to live with us. 
her coldness towards Daniel who works shifts, her outrageous demand during my father's funeral, and her words about my father. What Kay did might be seen as wrong by others, but to me, it was a relief. Today is Sam's haircut day. Come back and take him now. Emily's words over the phone came back to me. Void of any kindness, sharp as a knife. Regardless of what anyone says. I was even grateful to Kay. The next day, Daniel called me while I was staying at my parents' house. Mom, can you come home now? Now? As soon as possible. There's something important I need to discuss. I want to do it while Sam is at daycare. Sensing the urgency in his voice. I drove home quickly. Entering the living room, I found Daniel with an unusually stern face and Emily, looking defeated, sitting on the sofa. Sorry for calling you out of the blue. What's going on? Emily did something terrible to Sam. Terrible? I remembered the bruise on Sam's neck. Emily always insisted on taking him for shower herself. Could it be? I found bruises on Sam's neck and arms, and when I checked, his body was covered in similar marks. That's... After confronting her, Emily confessed to pinching him hard and hitting him with a stick frequently. It's too cruel for a small child. Emily's eyes widened in shock at Daniel's words, confirming the truth of his statement. Emily! My anger, which I thought had subsided, returned with even greater intensity. Emily's arrogance towards me and her coldness towards Daniel were one thing. But her cruelty towards my grandson was unforgivable. Whatever you did to Daniel and me, I might have let slide after yesterday. But hurting Sam? I'll never forgive you for that. Even if you don't forgive me, Sam is my child, not yours. What does that matter? Sam is my treasure. A daughter-in-law who hurts him has no place in this house. Get out now. My voice was louder than I intended, and for the first time, Emily looked at me with fear. Daniel then took over. We're getting a divorce, Emily. Your treatment of mom and grandpa was bad enough, but what you did to Sam is unforgivable. We're divorcing right now. Emily's complexion changed drastically at the mention of divorce. Divorce? Wait. If you do that, I'll have nowhere to live. Do as you please. Now that I know what you've done to Sam, I can't have you near him anymore. Besides, Mrs. Hannah has told you to leave. I haven't been doing my illustrator work for about half a year now. What am I supposed to do if I'm kicked out of here? Emily said this and then started crying like a little child. Her earlier arrogance is nowhere to be seen. This is what you call reaping what you sow. If you don't leave, I'll tell that man again about what you did to Sam. I threatened. At this, Emily began to tremble violently. Her face is a mess of snot and tears. Stop it. Okay, I get it. I'll leave. Does that mean you agree to the divorce? Daniel asked for confirmation, and Emily looked back and forth between Daniel and me, then slowly nodded. After further discussion, Daniel and Emily proceeded with the divorce, and Daniel gained custody of Sam. Coincidentally, around the same time, the tax office started investigating Emily. It turned out she hadn't filed tax returns for years despite claiming to be a freelance illustrator. Naturally, she faced a hefty back tax and penalties. Finding a new place to live was tough for her. The only accommodation she could afford was a dilapidated old apartment. After the divorce, I saw her once in the street, looking 20 years older, stooped over. She was juggling multiple jobs day and night to pay her living expenses and the tax office. Grandma. Sam reached out to me with the most adorable smile. Picking him up, he hugged me tightly. Guess what? What is it? I love you, Grandma. Hearing this warmed my heart, still heavy from the loss of my father. Daniel, now a single father, would leave Sam in daycare during his day shifts and ask me to take care of him during his evening and night shifts. Although weekdays can be tough, I cherish every moment with my grandson. I can't forever mourn my father's death. 
There's much to do to support Daniel in raising his child alone. I'm determined to help Sam grow into a kind man like his great-grandfather.